In this video, we will review the antenna alignment tool for the Infolink XG, Infolink 2x2 and Infoman 2x2. The antenna alignment tool provides information about the signal characteristics on both sides of the link and has the following benefits. It offers a real-time status of the antenna alignment, provides a visual, intuitive look of the current status of the antenna alignment and also of the pre previous minimum and maximum measured values. It ensures an accurate and easy alignment process. It has visibility of both sides of the link at each unit. It displays detailed essential radio parameters for evaluating the signal quality. Let's now review the best practices when performing antenna alignment. First of all, it is recommended to have two teams prepared for this activity, each team with at least two members. One should take the signal readings and communicate with the remote end. The other should manipulate the antennae. A few important steps need to be followed. You should perform a prior minimum configuration in the lab in order to verify the link establishment. On top of the settings performed in the lab, before starting the antenna alignment process, make sure that both units are configured with the lowest bit rate level, fixed not auto, and maximum TX power, fixed not auto. These settings should be done in the field before link establishment. The antenna alignment activity should start by estimating the azimuth and elevation. In case that the radio planning has been previously performed, please use the azimuth and elevation values computed by the radio planning tool. After the initial approximate alignment, the team at the endpoint with the lowest gain antenna should freeze it into position. Using the antenna alignment tool, the team with the antenna which has the highest gain should start to change the antenna azimuth slowly whilst watching the signal indicators. When the best signal is found, the antenna is frozen into that position. No contact should be made with the antennas during signal reading because the human body can affect the radiation pattern of the antenna and the signal readings. Let's move to the practical part. We will first describe the antenna alignment procedure for the Infolink and Infoman products. The antenna alignment tool can be opened from the device status section by clicking anywhere on the radio link. Just select Antenna Alignment Tool and click OK. In order to initiate the antenna alignment process, click on Start Test. You can see that the measurements for both local and remote ends have begun. Several parameters indicating the signal quality are evaluated in real time. Let's see what they mean and what should we aim for. The graphical representation gives us information about the input signal level and crossfading. Let's have a look at the local unit and explain all the parameters. The green bar on the left shows us the signal level received at chain zero of the local unit, which is the maximum of the two signal levels corresponding to chain chain 0 and chain 1, received from the remote unit. Chain 0 in this case expresses the received SNR from the remote chain 0 or the copolar component and chain 1 expresses the received SNR from the remote chain 1 or the cross-polar component. However, the remote antenna, for example, could be rotated 90 degrees without affecting the transmission. Therefore, the maximum received level will come from chain 1 in this case. Through the same analogy, the green bar on the right side of the local unit shows the input signal level at chain 1, received from the remote unit with the same polarization. Another important important parameter in the graphic representation is crossfading. It shows us the isolation between the co- and cross-polar received signals and represents the difference between the signal levels received from each polarization. In our case, chain 0 receives the co-polar signal at around 46 dB and the cross-polar signal at 19 dB, so the cross-polarization is their difference, which is 27 dB. Another 
important feature of the antenna alignment tool is that it offers a history of the input signal levels marked by the pink spots representing the maximum signal level and the blue spots representing the minimum signal level. So you can go back to a former position in case that one indicated a better input signal level. Ideal antennas alignments should have the green bars in the center of the dark zone. So try to find the best alignment of the two antennas by having the green bars as close as possible to the dark zone. The red zone should be avoided. Next, there are a few more parameters that also need to be reviewed. The error vector magnitude that evaluates the quality of the received signal. More precisely, it tells us how far are the received constellation symbols from the ideal symbols in the constellation. The measured EVM should be higher than 21 in absolute value in order to ensure a proper signal quality at the reception. The higher the EVM absolute value, the better the antenna alignment. The percentage of retries or retransmissions will increase if the quality of the link is bad, and the tool measures this in real time as well. And last, the maximum available bit rate for each end of the link is displayed. All that was discussed is summarized in few words containing the recommendations for achieving the best signal quality. Let's move forward and check out the alignment process in case of the InfoLink XG units. Click on the alignment button from the main menu and initiate the measurements by clicking on the Start Test button. The graphical representation shows both the local and remote ends of the link, but here the green bar shows us the RSSI level, which is the Received Signal Strength Indication. It measures the actual received signal, which is nothing but the useful signal with distortions added by noise and interferences. The crosstalk shows similarly to R5000 series, the difference between the copolar received signal and the cross-polar received signal, and it should be high enough to ensure a proper separation between polarizations. The general advice remains the same. The green bar should stay as close as possible to the center of the dark zone, avoiding the red zone for a proper alignment. Another important parameter is the CINR, or the Channel to Interference Plus Noise Ratio, that evaluates the quality of the signal and expresses how strong is the useful signal compared to the noise plus interference. The recommendations for the RSSI value and the CINR levels are shown in the tables. A CINR higher than 28 dB is considered ideal for working at the highest modulations, while the RSSI value should be ideally kept between minus 60 and minus 40 dBm. This concludes the scope of the video. Thank you for watching.